beautiful spring day. We're enjoying the warm weather and some wonderful friends. Societal expectation, it's a cultural tradition that, that you do certain things with family. I am so upset. I am so angry. I could scream. Said the cutest thing. I thought it was so cute. And I started laughing. She said, Dear Heavenly Father, please help me to survive. <laughs> you guys help Abby out. What's a mugshot? I don't know, Ruby. A mugshot seems to be something like this. Okay, technically that's not the official mugshot. That's from the hearing that just happened, but close enough. Ruby Frankie, the creator behind one of YouTube's most popular family vlogging channels, is finally facing consequences for what she has been putting her children through for years. YouTubers have been speaking out about eight passengers for years now, expressing their concern over Ruby and her husband Kevin's parenting. This concern grew as time went on, especially after joining a cult, uh, I mean a program called Connections. Connections was run by a woman named Jody Hildebrandt and eventually Ruby fit right in and they seemed to co-op with a lot of videos on their social media, consistently using words like distortion and principles of truth. I love principles more than my child. Your spirit is governed by living and choosing principles of truth. It was during these videos that Ruby shared even more information that left viewers fearful of the way that she could potentially be treating her young children. Those fears turned into a reality on August 30th. Both Ruby and Jody were arrested after one of Ruby's children escaped their home seeking food and water from a neighbor. The child's condition was so severe that not only were authorities contacted, but they were transported to a hospital. Sadly, this did not take anybody by surprise once the news of this broke. It feels as though too many voices have fallen on deaf ears for far too long at this point. People on YouTube have been begging for more regulations when it comes to family vloggers, and eight passengers is the prime reason as to why. Similar to a situation that happened a few years ago with a channel called Daddy of Five, it appears that once again, action has only taken place after it's been too late. At the very least, I hope that they take Ruby's bed away from her in prison. I just want to give a little bit of a heads up here. This is not the video I was planning to make this week. I've gotten so many comments on my most recent video on eight passengers, which was like eight months ago, and so many requests to give an update that I've changed my plans, and now this is the topic we're discussing today. With that being said, I have to warn you, I'm going to be very irate in this video. There have been so many creators who have been begging YouTube to do something about eight passengers, including myself. People have been voicing their concerns over this for years, years, and it's always devastating that it only gets picked up by mainstream media or law enforcement when something really tragic like this happens. Although apparently there have been multiple wellness checks that have been placed on Ruby and her children, so it's not like this is the first time the police have been notified about the circumstances, but this likely is the worst considering legal action was finally taken. On one hand, it's good that something's finally being done and there does seem to be a feeling of relief for those who were directly affected by Ruby, but it also feels like this has gone on much longer than it ever should have. We've talked about Ruby and her severely corrupt parenting before on this channel. Today, I give you an update that many were expecting to happen at some point in time, but I don't think anybody could have guessed how bad this situation turned out to be. Before we continue, however, as I've mentioned, this was not the original video I had planned for this week, and I will not be back until towards the end of September, so please allow me to disconnect from this pit of hell for just one moment. Before we continue today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Scentbird. Are you looking for a way to spice things up this fall without spending a fortune on a full-sized bottle of perfume? Look no further. Scentbird is a subscription service for fragrances that allow you to try new perfumes or colognes every month for just $17. From designer to indie brands, Scentbird has a wide variety of fragrances. I want to share with you today some wonderful fall scents that Scentbird was kind enough to send to me. Starting off with Fall Cashmere by Skylar. This scent does really capture the smell of fall for me. It has a warmth with the almond and the cinnamon. It is just a wonderful scent to transition into the cooler months that we have ahead. 
hopefully. It's 90 degrees today. The next scent that I have for you today is So Pretty by Kenzie. It has notes of bergamot, apple, iris, tangerine, and sandalwood. And that sounds like a lot, but all of it combined just smells really, really good. The next scent that I have is Let's Be Real by Confessions of a Rebel. Again, this is a very nice, warm smell. It's got notes of vanilla, cashmere woods, and even jasmine. This scent is bold, it is beautiful, it is great for a date night. And lastly, we have Juicy Couture's Viva La Juicy Noir. It has notes of berries, vanilla, and caramel with some honeysuckle and gardenia. I also really like the new packaging. I've showed this before, but I like that they have a lock feature on it compared to the previous packaging that just had a cap because this feels a lot safer when I put it in my bag. If you would like to try Scentbird for yourself, make sure to go to scentbird.com and use my code to Mimi55 for 55% off, which is just a little over $7 for your first month. Be sure to check the link in the description below and in the pinned comments as well. Thank you so much once again The Scentbird for sponsoring another video here on this channel, and with that being said, let's get back into the topic. You know what else really gets under my skin? I don't know where else to place this part of the video in, so I'm just putting it right here. Does anybody remember back when YouTubers were first voicing their concerns about Ruby, 8 Passengers, and everything involving this channel? People were starting to notice some concerning behaviors from Ruby and parenting methods, and they started speaking up about it and she tried to send a bunch of cease and desists out, which in my opinion seems like a scare tactic on her behalf because nothing even happened after all of that. People still continued to make videos and she continued to be an awful, awful parent. She deleted the Eight Passengers channel, by the way. As of right now, Ruby, Frankie, and Jody Hildebrandt are facing six charges of child abuse. According to NBC, the child who escaped their home appeared emaciated and malnourished with open wounds and duct tape around their extremities. In other words, their hands and feet. When authorities arrived at Ruby's home, there was another child in similar conditions. A total of four children were taken from Ruby's home while Ruby and Jody were arrested. And yes, I am aware that there is a recording of the 911 call, but I don't feel comfortable putting that in this video due to how upsetting and detailed it is, but it is available online for you to look up. As of right now, there seems to be no bail, but at the time of recording this, there is supposed to be a court hearing on Friday to determine what's going to happen next. So I do want to give you an update as there has been a hearing on September 8th determining whether or not Jody and Ruby will be able to get out on bail for their official trial, which is at a later date. What is interesting to note is that this hearing today has been delayed due to the amount of technical errors they've had because it was live streamed and over a thousand people were trying to tune in all at once. So an article from the Salt Lake Tribune states, Frankie and Hildebrandt will remain in custody at the Washington County Jail without bail a judge ruled Friday. Their initial appearance was set to start at 1.30 p.m., but before then, more than a thousand people had already piled into a planned live stream of the proceedings to listen in, overwhelming the system and delaying the start of the St. George hearing. Some of the many attendees shouted profanities, argued, or played music before they were removed. The eventual hearing was brief, with the 5th District Judge announcing that Frankie and Hildebrandt would remain held without bail until their next scheduled court appearance, currently stated for early September 21st. First, Hildebrandt's defense attorney noted that they plan to file a motion in the meantime for an expedited detention hearing. A motion is an application to the court made by the prosecutor or defense attorney requesting that the court make a decision on a certain issue before the trial begins. I don't know how helpful that would be for Jody, but that seems like something that they're trying to do. More information on Jody Hildebrandt's motion. A reporter who appeared to have been in the courtroom had shared, Today, Jody Hildebrandt's attorney filed a motion to the court asking for an expedited detention hearing, citing the defendant has experienced a life-threatening medical issue resulting in her hospitalization for several days. So I don't know what the medical condition could be that she has that would put her in the hospital, but we'll have to wait and see what more information comes out, especially after this hearing does take place, which again seems to be scheduled for the 21st. Normally I tried to avoid discussing family members of influencers here unless absolutely necessary because because in most cases, the family members of influencers aren't always public figures like the influencers are. Therefore, it's not fair to put them on a spotlight if they really don't have anything to do with this situation especially. However, just like with everything else, circumstances are different in different situations, and in this situation, it seems like the family members of Ruby are 
public figures. They do have their own YouTube channels, and they have spoke out about this. Ruby's family has come forward. Her daughter Sherry, who has already left her home a while back, posted this on her Instagram. The first post states, finally. The second post states, hi all, today has been a big day. Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell the police and CPS for years about this, and so glad they finally decided to step up. Kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Please keep them in your prayers and also respect their privacy. Ruby's other family members have also come out with this post. For the last three years, we've kept quiet on the subject of our sister Ruby Frankie for the sake of her children. Behind the public scene, we have done everything we could to try and make sure the kids were safe. We wouldn't feel right about moving forward with regular content without addressing the most recent events. Once we do, we will not be commenting on it further. Ruby was arrested, which needed to happen. Jody was arrested, which needed to happen. The kids are now safe, which is the number one priority. I honestly don't understand why this wasn't investigated further if so many wellness checks were done on Ruby and her family and the children were as malnourished as they were described by the neighbors who contacted authorities why was nothing done sooner to me it personally feels like a flawed system the only thing we could be grateful for is that something finally did happen sherry has also come forward asking for a collection of footage ruby has shared over the years on her social media which i assume is to help build a case with as much information as possible I've noticed a lot of other people saying what I'm about to say. I really want to echo this concern. If everybody is extremely worried about the things that they have seen while Ruby has been recording all this time, what things are happening when the camera is turned off? It seems like Ruby herself has confirmed that perhaps off camera, she might be worse than what we see in her YouTube videos. When your kid like jumps up and hits you in the face, your eye like literally just want to punch <laughs> happened, him back. It's like taking a, it's a good thing the camera's on. Let's the camera's rolling, so I can't get that mad. <laughs> it helps keep me under control. And if you haven't already seen it, there's an infamous clip from years ago where Ruby talks about her daughter's teacher calling her before she was homeschooled and asking her to bring in a lunch and Ruby said no because her daughter was supposed to pack her own lunch. She was expected to do that at six years old. Can you imagine expecting a six-year-old to have the responsibility of packing their own lunch every single day and expecting it to be an actual nutritional meal? Nevertheless, because she forgot to pack herself a lunch, Ruby wanted this to be a lesson. So she told the teacher, no, I'm going to repeat myself. Her daughter was six years old. I just got a text message uh, from teacher and she said that did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch um, but I I responded and just said I was responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch so the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. This wasn't the only time that this occurred either. Sorry to tell you this, honey, but unless you find a friend who's willing to share some of their food with you, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to eat. But if you're not responsible for your lunch and your lunch money, that's the natural consequence. And I'm really sorry you're learning this the hard way. I will have a wonderful, yummy snack. Just hang in there today and, and just make it make up your mind. You're going to be really careful and make sure you grab your stuff when you go to school next time. And maybe you have a, a good friend who will share some of their sandwich with you or something. Russell, I'm really sorry. He sounded like he was going to cry. Third time's a charm? I'm only going to say it one more time and then you're going to lose the privilege to eat dinner. Stop crying or I'm going to have you go upstairs and you won't have any breakfast. And my kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm like a mean barbarian, but I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast. 
until you get your chores done. This has been sickening for people to see over the past few years. Not to mention how unbearable it must have been for the children experiencing that. As you can see, this is the type of stuff that people have been voicing out against for years now. Purposefully depriving children of food is neglect. When you live in a home where you're making a lot of money off of exploiting your own children in family vlogs, by the way, living a comfortable lifestyle where you can very easily afford any of your children's needs, it's not a privilege to be able to eat food. It would be one thing if she was like taking away like snacks or like sweets or something like that treat type of foods, but saying that they cannot eat their breakfast, depriving them of school lunches, telling them that they will lose their privilege to eat dinner. That shouldn't be a privilege. That is a necessity. You say something like you lose your privilege of watching TV or going on a tablet. The most infuriating part of all of this is the fact that this entire career that Ruby has built off of YouTube, off of the backs of her own children, is a slap in the face to them when she makes this comment saying that as soon as they turn 18, they're out of the house. Kids are not welcome to come live with me after they're 18. Don't you think that it might be a little considerate to be at least a little bit more compassionate and helpful towards them, especially since they're kind of the backbone of your entire career, or at least were? But if you thought it couldn't get any worse, you're watching one of my videos. Of course, it continuously gets worse as we go through every single situation. There was one clip of Ruby that I found where she was procrastinating taking her daughter to the hospital because as she herself admitted, she was stalling. She takes her time and vlogs herself discussing the situation. I have been stalling in my bathroom. I took an hour long shower and just cleaned in the shower. And he's like, I think we need to take Sherry to the emergency room. I think I'm cleaning the countertops, mopping the floor. I'm stalling. I think Kevin and I are gonna take Sherry to the emergency room today. Well, let me take a shower and then I'll be out. <laughs> it's been it's been an hour, so Sorry, this is pissing me off so badly just thinking about some of this stuff. Like, how bad of a parent could you possibly be that you wait to take your child to the emergency room? But you know what you weren't hesitant for? Whipping out your camera as soon as you got there to film your child in a hospital bed. This is on top of taking her son's bed away from him, leaving him to sleep on a beanbag chair for months, and sending him to a wilderness camp, which from what I've found seems to be part of the troubled teen industry, which if you don't know, the troubled teen industry does have camps which are horrifically abusive to kids both mentally and physically. And when I say camp, I'm not talking about your average summer camping trip where you sit around and do arts and crafts and go swimming at a lake. Not every facility in the troubled teen industry is a wilderness camp or some sort of outdoor program, but the ones that are, are horrific. I've talked about the troubled teen industry in a previous video. If I can find it, I'll link it in the description below. Some troubled teen facilities are in buildings. Some are in outdoor wilderness programs. They're designed for the youth who seems to have behavioral issues, but as many have been speaking out about the troubled teen industry for years, a lot of teens come back with more issues than they went into the facility with. Nevertheless, Ruby used the methods from this camp she sent her son to as an excuse for why the punishment of taking away his bed was reasonable. But nobody bought this excuse. Oh, and the reason why he was punished like this in the first place was for telling his younger sibling that they were going to Disney World when they weren't. They took away his bed for months because he played a prank on his sibling. Ruby, who is in prison right now, likely has a better place for herself set up. She is likely laying in a bed. It might not be a comfortable bed, but at least it is a bed, probably. I can dive deeper and deeper into the ways that she would cruelly treat her children throughout the years on her channel while simultaneously milking them for content. But we're gonna take a break from that and take a look into the connection situation that she's found herself in over the past couple of years. Somehow with this situation, things continue to get worse. So a while back, Ruby joined Jody Hildebrandt in her program called Connections, where they gave horrific parenting advice through their social media. If someone hurting, you acknowledge the hurt. If your kid came to you on fire, would you say, I'm so glad you trusted me. 
to tell me you're on fire. But if I put out the fire, that's gonna really hurt and you're gonna end up with scabs anyway. So I'm just gonna love you where you are right now. No, you, you throw them on the ground and you start rolling them. You get a blanket and you start hitting the flames. And they're gonna say, you're hurting me. You're, you're beating me, you're controlling. It's like, no dear, hold still. I'm getting the fire out. I dug into this a bit more in my last video. Both Ruby and Jody talk about restricting their children's privacy, which of course as a parent, you do want to make sure you're supervising what they do, but to the level and extent that they do this is very overbearing and could leave negative effects on their children when they get older. You must be dedicated and committed to being with that child full time. I would include homeschooling in that, finding some kind of private school that is absolutely um, in communication and transparent with the parents, where you, the parent, could come in. In this home, you don't get personal space because this is my space because I'm the parent. If you want your own personal space, you'll need to get your own space. This is mine. And as long as you're living in my home, it is my job to know everything about you. You don't get to sneak, you don't get to hide, you don't get to have secrets. Not in my house. Do you see how loving that is? Now, if you're in distortion, you're reeling right now. If you're in distortion, you're, 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 ready, to, you're ready to pull your hair out right now. You're ready to scream. They also removed access to forms of media and even the outside world, as Ruby even stated, she is now, or I guess was, homeschooling her children. So they weren't even given the ability to interact with other children. They were completely isolated. I'm homeschooling all my kids now and it's fun. It's enjoyable. I pulled them from school and and we've had um, some really great experiences experiences so far. Ruby and Jody have both made some homophobic comments, especially Jody on different occasions. And people will say, well, homosexuality is not the same as pedophilia. Okay, it may not be the same thing, but what is the same thing is sexual deviancy. Is she actually trying to claim that anybody who is LGBTQ plus is just as bad as a pedophile? What the fuck? I was going through my son's room and notice some gay pride flags, etc. I look at that and I'm like, what, what do you mean you noticed some gay pride flags, etc.? I don't know what that means. You noticed them. So that tells me you're completely checked out that your, your son just puts gay pride flags in his room, etc. And you don't, you don't know that those things are there. A lot of questions mm -hmm. about what I call deviant behavior. So whether you're behaving in a homosexual way, whether you're behaving in um, a, 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 a way that is outside the bonds that God has set, it's deviant sexual behavior. Now you may agree with, you know, it's fine to be transgendered as they call it. That's just a made up word. Somebody made it up and there still isn't any truth to it. It doesn't matter how you angle it, how you talk about it, how many people support it. There's no truth in I was born in a wrong body. Even though someone says, but I feel it, I feel it. Doesn't well, matter if you feel it. I feel all sorts of things on a daily basis. And most of it's like completely dramatic and wrong. I would say niece because that's how I know her as, but I don't know if that's offensive or not, has come out as transgender. Okay, so right there already, this gal is writing this question and she's already gone into control. She's saying, I don't know how to talk about this. We as a family are conflicted as to whether or not we should continue to spend time with them. Should we see them less or even completely cut them out of our lives? This is a situation I'm sure many people are in and, and not just because it's LGBTQ. Maybe you're afraid of bringing your, your kids over to a family member because they're, they're doing drugs. Mom and dad, there are not a lot of places you can go to in this world who give you permission to be truthful. They're gonna call you a Karen, they're gonna call you um, overbearing, they're gonna call you uh, controlling, a helicopter parent. None of those are based in principles of truth. All of that is a lie. Overall, things seem to be extremely toxic in their videos, especially with the advice they would give to other parents. The scariest part about this though, is that even though 
both Ruby and Jody are now sitting in prison cells, there are families out there that they have influenced. And there are children that are being affected by parents that have been affected by the influence of these two women. And this is proven with several people interacting in their community, asking questions, seeking advice and guidance from both Ruby and Jody, and they give awful, awful advice in return. It just scares me to think about how many people are out there that have been influenced by these women. Speaking of parents, no, I did not forget about the father in this situation. We're the drivers of the eight passengers. We're mom and dad. We thought it'd be fun to just say hi and introduce our family. Got a lot of fun things planned today. We're going to celebrate Ruby's birthday. Hope we have fun today. I will talk to you guys later. And if you're not good, I will turn this car around and we will go home. And I'm Kevin. And we are the creators and parents of Eight Passengers. It seems that within the past year or so, Kevin and Ruby have split up. And Kevin is not being charged or arrested as of right now that we know of. But as a news reporter grilled his lawyer, while Kevin seemingly wasn't present for the events that led to Ruby and Jody's arrest, he certainly went along with a lot of Ruby's parenting tactics that I would say some of which were his own as well, especially since how much he endorsed it and supported it. Ruby has apparently been working with Connections for the past four years. This is new. I've been studying this for four years. So I question, was Connections one of the groups they sought mental health advice from when they mentioned it in this clip? And the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling abusive are actually things that mental health professionals have uh, counseled us to do. And these were recorded in their vlogs over the years. This included taking their son's bed away from him, restricting food from their kids, isolating their children, and milking them for their vlogging content on YouTube. We decided it was best to clue you guys in on what's been going on uh, a little bit with Ch Chad today has just entered the Anasazi Foundation Wilderness therapy program mm -hmm. where he's going to spend the next eight to ten weeks living in the um Anasazi Desert. Yeah, the desert mountains of Arizona. He's even been a part of Connections himself before he and Ruby split up. Kevin and I have decided that we are going to give the gift of truth to them this year for Christmas. We are going to give them the gift of boundaries, and we're going to give them the gift of repentance. I really hope that despite all of that, however, he wouldn't approve of the way that their children were found by authorities. That is what his lawyer claims as well, so it seems like that's the case, but only time will really tell where this goes. Oh, there is one more thing. On top of being arrested, the Connections channel has actually been terminated from YouTube. Sadly, things don't end there. Uh, neighbors have actually chimed in and shared some of their experiences. Some neighbors have made reports claiming that they were afraid for the worst, that they were expecting to one day come out of their house and find a crime scene. People expected there to be someone passing away due to the circumstances that they were already aware of prior to this incident. How bad could everything have been going on to make neighbors of the people that live in this house expect and fear for the worst. There's so much more to this situation that I could go over with you today. For right now, I think this sums up just about everything we know. There's one YouTuber who has been doing an excellent job at covering this entire story from years ago to the present day, who is Marky. I'm gonna leave his entire channel linked down below because he's done so many videos talking about eight passengers and connections, Jody and Ruby, and other people involved. He's done a fantastic job at covering this situation. There are also a ton of different TikTok accounts that have been re-uploading a lot of footage from the Eight Passengers YouTube channel. As I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, when it comes to family channels, we've already seen a catastrophe like this happen once before with a channel called Daddy of Five. Similar activities took place where these parents would record themselves being abusive to their children while gaining a huge following on YouTube before backlash started settling in from people outside of their fan base. Eventually, the law got involved and 
two of their children were taken away from them. Until now, that was one of the biggest family vlogging catastrophes to have ever happened on YouTube. The thing is, these are not the only two family vlogging channels that have mistreated their children and have documented that for the world to see. And it's only been very recent that laws are starting to be passed to protect children in this type of content, whereas previously it was only passed for child actors, more laws need to be passed to prevent parents from exploiting their own children like the way that Eight Passengers has and Daddy of Five has and other family vlogging channels have. It shouldn't take two catastrophic events that ended up in a legal situation for that to even be considered with how much this has already been discussed as a problem online. And when it comes to YouTube as a platform, this content should not be allowed, or at the very least, it should be strictly monitored. Parents have been getting away with far too much in family vlogging videos, and it should not take a second catastrophe like this to happen for something to be done about it. People have been voicing concerns about this for years, and it's gone ignored. So many people have come forward expressing their concerns over several other channels out there as well that cross so many other boundaries. To be crystal clear, the other channels out there that I've seen do not appear nearly as bad as 8 Passengers did. But having your standards met at not being as bad as Ruby Frankie doesn't mean that the things that other family channels do are okay. Sure, there might be a couple channels here and there that are pretty decent and might follow all the ethical rules you would think one should when making a channel that revolves around family lifestyle content, but I would argue that many of these channels exploit their children, cross so many boundaries, and cause a lot of harm, and I predict that years from now, when the children of these videos grow up, there is going to be a huge movement against these types of channels as people realize what they were put through as kids. Thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much if you've been supporting me over on Patreon. And thank you so much to anybody who has given me a super thanks. And thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Go to Scentbird.com and use code TAMIMI55 for 55% off of your first month at Scentbird. Like I said, I was originally going to put out a different video today, but this topic was weighing so heavy on me and so many people were asking me about it that I really just wanted to get it out there, especially since I'll probably not be posting anything for a week or so. I'll still be around checking comments and whatnot. I'm just going to be busy this week and won't be able to film anything. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.